Aloha, I'm Colonel Brian Anacarico, Commanding Officer of Marine Corps Base Hawaii. Recently, there has been increased discussion and social media dialogue on the issue of chlordane in the soil around Marine Corps Base Hawaii. Some of the information being passed is correct, but much of it has been off the mark. I would like to take this opportunity to address the issue of chlordane in the soil surrounding family housing areas and set the record straight about what is and what is not accurate. First and foremost, I want to emphasize that safety and well-being of our family members is my top priority. That will always remain paramount. The homes you live in on base are safe and provide great value dollar for dollar compared to housing outside the gate. Let me start by speaking about the past use of chlordane. Chlordane and other similar pesticides were legally used throughout the United States to protect homes and businesses from ground termites. This occurred from the 1940s until 1988 when it was banned by the United States Environmental Protection Agency due to concerns about damage to the environment and harm to human health. Because Hawaii's climate supports ground termite infestation, local pest control companies, homeowners, the city, state, and the military regularly used chlordane until 1988. The most common application method was to spread chlordane in soil beneath and around building foundations. Chlordane was the most commonly used pesticide to control termites in Hawaii and throughout the mainland. The city and county of Honolulu has stated these pesticides can be found universally throughout the island. Even though it has been 26 years since chlordane was banned, these pesticides break down slowly, so residual amounts could be present near housing and businesses throughout the United States, both on and off military installations, including Marine Corps Base Hawaii. During the government-funded construction of the 212-unit Pahonua Family Housing Units in 2005, soil tests confirmed the presence of chlordane in the soil. As a result, and to ensure these chemicals were not a risk to human health, we asked the Navy Environmental Health Center to perform a human health risk assessment in accordance with EPA guidelines. Their risk assessment concluded that although chlordane was present, it was at levels considered acceptable by the EPA. The one exception to this was a small area between two home sites that had higher than expected levels. Soil in that small area was removed and placed under a concrete basketball court to eliminate human contact and the risk to residents. Before we took action to remediate that one contaminated area, we provided a site visit, briefings, and documents to the Hawaii Department of Health. They were satisfied with our plan. Since 2005, most family housing areas on Marine Corps Base Hawaii have been redeveloped. Some of the redevelopment was funded and constructed by the U.S. government, but most of it was accomplished by our public-private venture, or PPV, housing partner, Forest City. Our PPV partner also followed a rigorous soil management and testing plan in order to ensure proper mitigation of any chlordane-impacted soil. As concerns over chlordane have arisen, the base, along with Forest City, is preparing fact sheets for each neighborhood that provide soil histories, actions taken prior to and during construction, and other information based on available historical documents. These fact sheets and other information will be available at the housing office as well as posted on the Forest City website. We will also post letters from the Hawaii Department of Health that specifically answers residents' health concerns. Lastly, this information will be available along with subject matter experts at several upcoming community meetings. I will also attend and look forward to your questions. Now I would like to briefly address two common misconceptions regarding technical issues with chlordane in our soil. First, that soil tests higher than 1.6 parts per million of chlordane require removal of the soil. 1.6 parts per million is not a regulatory level where we must take actions to remove the soil. Instead, it is a conservative screening level used to establish the point at which further site-specific analysis is required to determine if remediation or mitigation measures are required. The second misconception is that a remediation analysis should be based on figures assuming residents reside in family housing for 30 years versus six years. Health assessments Consider realistic exposure assumptions, and the Navy Environmental Health Center's six-year exposure assumption was made 
Due to the maximum occupancy of military housing during an OCONUS tour length, which is typically six years. Additionally, our housing surveys indicate that a majority of Marine Corps Base Hawaii residents only stay in the military housing here at Marine Corps Base Hawaii for three years. Similar to precautions you find on commonly used store-bought pesticides, fertilizers, and cleaning products, there are common sense measures that you can take to minimize exposure to residual chlordane in any housing area. These include washing your hands after digging in soil and washing fruits and vegetables that were grown in the area. These are not extraordinary measures, but things you should do regardless of whether or not chlordane is in the soil and regardless of whether you live on or off base. The safety and well-being of our families and military members is of paramount importance. We will never knowingly expose you to any health risks. As a resident of on-base housing, Myself, along with my wife and two children, I can assure you I will not stand for unsafe conditions within housing. If I believe the past use of chlordane presented a health hazard to my family and to the Marines, sailors, and their families living in housing, I would demand immediate corrective action. Thank you for watching and Semper Fidelis.